Hey guys, welcome to Cryptids Canada. I hope everybody's having a great day. So come on, come on in. Sit down, find a comfortable spot, put your feet up. Mi casa es tu casa. Okay guys, let's just get going because this story is a good one. Okay, he titles it, Bigfoot Scared the Bad Right Out of Me. Hey, I love your channel, and I just adore you as a person. It's wonderful that you never judge the stories you read. You only show appreciation to the writer for their time. Anyway, I take this subject seriously because I've had many sightings and an experience that has changed me forever. When I was 14 in 1969, I went to stay with my grandparents. I won't go into the details of where they lived exactly, as some of my people are still in that vicinity, and I'm afraid they would be sought out after and trolled. So I barely knew this part of my family, and I was shocked that I was basically being driven by the police to go and stay with them. They were all kind and loving towards me, I had four male cousins who lived nearby and I became fast friends with them. All my family lived in close proximity to one another, even sharing property lines. My grandparents' home was surrounded by mountains and mainly blue spruce, aspens, and Douglas firs. This was the first time I had ever shown any interest in trees. I just thought they were so beautiful. So the small community of homes and farms were in a valley, and that was surrounded by beautiful rolling hills. Now, our family farm sat up higher on a hill than my aunt and uncle's homes, which were just down from us. My bedroom was an add-on, and I had access to the front, the side, and the back of the property from my bedroom. And what I mean by this is that my windows looked out the front, the side and the back. The first morning that I was there, I got up really early with the sun because I was pretty homesick. I had barely slept at all. I rolled over and I leaned on my windowsill looking out the back and the first thing I saw was a really big being that was covered in long brown hair. It blended in perfectly to the trees that it was leaning on. I heard the floor creak, and then I heard, Good morning, grandson. How did you sleep? It was my grandfather, and I waved him over, and I asked, What was that? And he couldn't see what I was speaking about, but I could clearly see it. It really bothered me that he wouldn't admit that he saw it. So later that day, when my cousins came to introduce themselves, they were all about my age, and we became fast friends. I asked them if they had ever heard of the thing that I saw, and they said no. This was really strange to me, and it was starting to really bother me. Then I asked my uncle, who I had met the day before, and he looked me in the eye, and I could tell he wanted to believe me, but he was really confused by what I was saying. As for a 14-year-old kid... I was just irritated because I knew what I saw. A few days later, I was woken up by what I thought was deep breathing. Although I was awake, I pretended to be sleeping. And after a few minutes, I heard it begin to walk away. I snuck up to the window and I actually saw it slink way down the driveway, then across the side lawn to the house below that belonged to my uncle. It snuck up to the window and it swayed back and forth. But what really freaked me out was when its head came to the center of the window. Normally that wouldn't be a big deal. But this house had a cellar and the top floor was on top of it. There were six stairs that led up to the main floor. That would make it at least 12 feet tall by my guesstimate. 
as I stood there watching this thing, I noticed the light went on in the room and the creature crouched down behind some large water tanks. I saw what looked like my aunt looking out the window. She went from side to side trying to see what had been looking in her window. And then my uncle came out on the front porch. And that's when I seen this thing take off on all fours, running as fast as a horse. I kept all of that to myself. Then I just went back to sleep. Later, the cousins all came and picked me up to go fishing at the large creek that ran through all the properties. We joked back and forth with each other. I felt good with this group of kids. They didn't smoke or swear bad like the kids I got into trouble with. I started noticing that I would get hit with a pebble every now and again. Then I saw it hit the water. I started looking around. I was getting creeped out. That's when I asked the guys if they had heard or saw a really big, giant, wild-looking man. And the look they gave me was that I was nuts. So I just shut up. We ended up with a couple of fish each, and we decided we were going to do what they called a catch and cook. So we left all of our fish on stringers, and... Me and two of the guys left to go get some matches, a pan, and the ingredients that we needed to cook the fish. Two of the guys stayed back and just kept fishing. We were on our way back with all the stuff when the two kids came flying towards us, one of them with a bunch of fish trailing behind him. We heard this loud, terrifying roar and screaming sound coming from the woods. two boys were yelling for us to turn around and run. So we did. We ran to grandma and grandpa's. We burst through the doors. And after all the parents had been called and the two boys finally calmed down enough to explain what happened, they said that once we left, they started hearing rocks hit the water. When one of the kids picked up a rock and tossed it across the creek and into the woods, they heard a loud growl, like a giant German shepherd. Then they looked at each other and said, what the heck was that? Then they saw another rock hit the water. Now they were pretty sure that it was us guys who had run down and snuck across the creek that was tossing the rocks at them. So for fun, they started tossing rocks back over, but they were aiming low so as not to hit us hard. The two boys kept the rocks going until the bushes started shaking like mad and then a monster stepped out. It was screaming and shaking its fist. It was running at the water and then it would stop and then it would do it again. The boys didn't waste another second. They got up and they ran. The one boy who had a hold of two of the three stringers didn't even think when he just started running. He was just trailing those fish behind him. The three uncles grabbed their weapons and went to retrieve the tackle boxes, fishing rods, and fish that were left behind. When they arrived, of course, the fish were gone and the fishing rods and gear were destroyed and strewn all over the bank of the creek. To me, that was the biggest lesson I have ever learned. I begged and I pleaded with my parents to come home. A few days later, my dad came and got me. My father was stunned to hear that story. Did I learn my lesson? Oh, yes, I did. I just retired from a life of service to the medical community as an ENT, ear, nose, and throat specialist. My four cousins also chose professional paths in life. All five of us studied the sciences, and we were always searching for what we now know as a Bigfoot. Three of my cousins had other encounters. The five of us believe they are complex humans and capable of just as much as us, if not more. However, they use their abilities 
where we stumble upon ours. Signed, Doc. Well, um, yep, there's another one. I greatly appreciate it. It was an amazing story. I, too, believe they are a type of human. I'm not going to get into all that biblical stuff, but I do believe that, you know, they just went one way and we went the other. Anyways, guys, I think I'm just going to stop there. It's pretty late right now. I hope you enjoyed this video. And you know I love ya. We'll see you back here in a day or two. Bye for now.